Life along the coast, beaches, boating, beautiful views, but also a future danger arise in sea level that could force people from their homes. A study released by Climate Central predicts the ocean will rise by 4 to 10 feet by the middle of the century. Climate Central predicts the coastal cities most threatened are Jacksonville, Sacramento, Virginia Beach, Miami, and New Orleans. Now that's based on where their population lives in relation to coastal areas impacted by high tides. Weather Authority meteorologist Rebecca Berry has been looking into this prediction, what it means for us and what can be done about it. Rebecca? We're out here tonight in San Marco. We've been checking some locations that typically see nuisance flooding. You know, we're coming up on a full moon. We've also had the nor'easter last week. And it's things like that that can cause a temporary rise in sea level. It'll give you a four to six inch rise above the normal level of high tide. And it gives you a preview of what it might look like if that were to happen. And it does leave a lot of people concerned. We did not have a water view on the, you know, from the front of the house when we bought it. Megan and John Stork live on an intracoastal canal. It's swampy. Last fall, tidal flooding caused damage to their home. The nails were rotted because all the salt water is all up on it, so it's extra corrosion. So I'm having to redo all this with uh, all new materials. And wreaked havoc on their daily lives. He would have to drive me in my car anymore. So we plan our whole day around when we could get to work because of the tide. A problem that just wouldn't seem to end. I mean, every, every high tide would be completely covered the street for over a little over two weeks straight. Yeah, every, I mean, every day it was bad. We had to wear galoshes. We had to have rain boots on to even be yeah. and to check the mail, um, to take the dog for a walk. Just everything, our whole, our whole life changed for three weeks. Yeah. It brought out the ingenuity in some, but everyone saw how serious it was firsthand. Our neighbors, these um, next door, they actually had to move because it went all the way in their house. They had like a small stream running um, front to back. Like their rugs were completely floating. And in a city surrounded by water, this type of flooding can become a common occurrence. When the tides uh, ride on this high sea level and they get above some elevation, flooding can occur. And it, whether it's nuisance flooding or, or greater, it's uh, water in the streets that people see. The tidal floods act as a wake-up call for some people, showing what can happen in their own backyards. And we can run actual samples. That's Flagler College professor Dr. Matthew Brown has been following this problem closely. On top of a little bit of sea level rise, whether it's a coastal storm, whether it's a period of like onshore winds that push more water against the coast, in the short term, you're probably looking at more days of nuisance flooding. A recent study by Climate Central shows a harsh reality for some of Florida's most populated coastal areas. It states that currently more than 2.4 million people live within four feet of the high tide line in South Florida. Within the study's anticipated rise in sea level, experts foresee millions of people being forced out of their communities by rising water. Places like Tampa, Miami, any place that really built up a lot of their infrastructure sort of right on the water, it's going to have a really good impact because people are either going to have to, they're going to have to find ways to raise buildings, raise infrastructure, um, make the first floor of those buildings sort of flood, quasi flood resistant if you even could, um, or relocate. I'm standing here on the side of River Road, which is known for flooding during extreme high tides or during long periods of time of onshore winds, drawing more water into the river. Now, today's high tide is measuring four to six inches above a normal high tide, and it gives us a great picture of what we'd be dealing with with four to six inches of sea level rise, except it would look like this at every high tide. That's a question Megan and Jonathan have already started asking. I know we're lower and I understand that, but this should flood before the street floods. We've asked them about a flapper valve or if they were to install something to stop it. And the answer we're getting on that is, what did they say that if it... The water wouldn't be able to drain because of the pressure of the valve or something. But which doesn't make sense uh, It's like the opposite of what it's supposed to be doing, I would think. Backflow prevention devices are one of the first lines of defense against tidal flooding and stormwater drains. I contacted the city and they said these devices are installed in four locations in the city. Helm Drive at Julington Creek, Copeland Street at the St. Johns River, the Children's Way Pump Station, and the Landon Pump Station. Regardless of whether it's, you know, four feet by mid-century, whether it was ten feet by mid-century, you know, sea level is going to rise. And we will see, I mean, if you have, if we have so much infrastructure that's been built right along the coast, whether it's Jacksonville, you know, Miami is a great example, Tampa, there very well might be, you know, people that need to move elsewhere. That scenario is already playing out on Megan and Jonathan Street. There's nothing you can do. You can't help anything. All you do is stare at it and just pray that it doesn't come any further than it is. It's a very helpful situation. I contacted the city. 
I contacted the city and asked them if they had any plans to install any more of those backflow prevention devices, and they said they were considering Riviera Street here in San Marco as a possible option for that. Reporting live from San Marco, Rebecca Berry, Channel 4, The Local Station.